I'm pretty excited about this week's project. We're going to start from this fly through a wireframe wormhole project by downloading the code for that project and add some things. Let's take a look. We'll add stars for a cool effect. Uh, you'll see there's crosshairs too where the mouse cursor is. And we'll add the ability to shoot blasts by clicking the impact the wormhole. And if you shoot a box, it will destroy the box. Cool, right? Oh, if there were time, I would add sound too. But yeah, we'll do this in two basic parts, about four steps. Download the repo and clean it up. Uh, add the crosshairs and then add a mouse listener to move the crosshairs around. Then we'll add laser blasts and a mouse click, shoot the laser blasts. Uh, and then the second part is the collision detection part. There's a couple of steps here where we have to create an object for the wormhole geometry, as well as all those little primitive boxes. And then we'll use ray casting to determine whether or not we've hit an object. Let's get started. I want to come into my code and remove this orbit controls. Really not sure why it's in here. It will interfere with our stuff if we don't pull it out. I'm also going to need these two variables here, this W and H, to be lets instead of cons. Oh, one other, one other little detail that I think is actually kind of cool. Change the cursor to crosshairs. Excuse me, crosshair. And now we've, already, we've got this little plus instead of a pointer. Cool, right? Let's add the crosshairs below the boxes. The well, first thing I'd like to do is to create a vector that's going to store the mouse position. That's a vector 2. And then I want to create a group to hold the crosshairs geometry. They're just going to be four lines that I draw from scratch. I'm going to set it to one unit in front of the camera and then add it to the camera. Not adding it to the scene. You'll see why in a minute. Maybe you already figured out why. I'll create a crosshairs mat and this line geometry, which is empty. I'll create these vertices, two vertices, just a, a vertical line. Using this kind of cumbersome call, I'll set this buffer attribute for these two vertices. I'm going to create a for loop to create four of these guys. Uh, create a line based on the material and the geometry, rotate it 90 degrees each time, and then add it to the crosshairs group. And save it. No crosshairs. The reason it doesn't show up is because of this line here. We've added the crosshairs to our camera. If we want to see that, we have to scene dot add camera like so now we've got our crosshairs let's wire up a mouse listener to our window let's add a mouse move listener and an on mouse move handler we'll define that we're going to set the mouse position based on this formula here and what this is is essentially we've got our window width and height and we'll calculate an aspect from that and then I want this fudge factor too. play with these numbers and see what happens it's easier to see it than it is to explain it and then I'm using this fudge factor to, to make it all work nicely if I save that I'm not seeing the mouse move because I need to tell the crosshairs position the mouse pause dot x and y and negative one on the z. So now the crosshairs respond to the mouse movement. So let's create our get laser bolt method and go from there. First, let's create an array to hold all of the lasers and then define the geometry because we'll only need one geometry definition. We'll just reuse the same one for each laser. Let's create a reusable method to create our laser bolt, and we'll create a material with these basic properties. I want it to be transparent because I'm going to have it fade out. I also want it to ignore the fog in the scene. Create a new mesh, and now comes the fun part. There's some vector math. I'm going to set the position to the camera's position. Uh, some variables we'll use later. Now calculate the goal pause. Uh, this is a funny call, but 
basically what it does is to grab the world space coordinates of the crosshairs. Then I'm going to calculate the laser direction. This, uh, all of these method calls are in the 3JS documentation. Um, this one sets the laser direction to position minus goal pause and normalizes it, meaning it keeps the same direction but makes it a length of one and then multiply it by this speed prop speed variable I've, I've created. Um, I'm going to create an update method and inside it I'm just going to set the laser bolt position, uh, well subtract the direction from the position. And then create this user data, a nice storage place for all our custom properties and methods and return the laser bolt. Cool, let's call this get laser bolt when we click the mouse. Let's come down here to where we're storing all our event listeners. Okay, let's add an event listener to the window to fire this method each time there's a click. And that method looks like this, where I'm just gonna create a new laser bolt, add it to my lasers array, and add it to the scene. And save. And we're not gonna see any bolts yet because we need to tell the lasers dot for each, tell them to update. It could just be an L actually. L dot update. Let's see how that looks. Oh, I, I ruined it. I broke it. L dot update is not a function. Oh, it should be my bad. User data dot update. I think that's going to make it happier. Oh yeah, it's a lot happier now. I'm shooting lasers. Cool, right? Because we already have that post processing on there. It has this cool kind of glowy look. All right, so that's the first part of this video. The second part is gonna to be to wire up the collision detection. We'll do that in two parts, as I said. First, to create kind of uh, hit test geometries, and then use ray casting to find the intersected objects. Let's go. Okay, so right below where we defined the tube for our wormhole, Let's add another tube, then create a hit mat, a material for this, this tube. It's going to use that color, and it's going to be backside. I want the normals reversed. I think that's important for collision detection. Don't know for sure, but it works. So I'll create a mesh, call it tube hit area, and I'm going to add that to the scene. Well, a little bit of house cleaning here. This tube color should be defined up here above the material, the line mat, and then I'll use that here as well. I don't think I need this at all. Um, I'm not using these points or these, this material. I'm just going to get rid of all this. That's a little bit of extra cleanup. Great, so now if I save, shouldn't look any different. Because of the new object I've created is entirely transparent, but if I make it semi-transparent, you should be able to see. Oh my god, it's horrible. Um, because of the glow, everything's all blown out. But you can kind of see it anyway. So that should be zero. Great. The net result should be an invisible mesh that will be used for collision detection. Let's do the same for the boxes. Here the box is right here. We already have this box, which I think is, is we're not even adding to the scene. Let's change the name of this to hitbox. And I'll, you'll see why in a second. I'm gonna, you'll see why right now this is gonna be our, um, let's see, box group dot add hitbox. And I broke it. Um, I think I missed a reference to box somewhere, but let's have a look. Box group is not defined, right? Let's just define box group. So const box group is equal to a new three dot group, and then scene dot add box group. This box group will 
Oh, wow. Get to see the boxes. Cool. I actually want this material to be the same color as this guy. So I'm going to move, let's see, where's the color? Move this. Move this guy up here to the top of our looping method. Then I can define a color. This is the color. I want to move this up declaration up here. Then I can use it here and here. Great. And if I turn wireframe off, you can see it more clearly. Big glowy box. I like the big glowy box. Uh, transparent is true. Opacity should be something really low. I kind of like the glowy box. Original, the original intention is to make them completely invisible. So let's stick with that for now. I want to give this hitbox a name property because I'm going to use that later. In addition to this name property, I want my, my box to, to have a user data. Where should I can define that? Where do I define box lines here? So below that. I'm kind of linking back to the, the visible box and you'll see why in a little bit. All right, that's it for the uh, collision detection objects. Now let's wire up the waycat. Let's wire up the ray casting. Whoa. Let's do that below. Actually, we'll do it inside the laser bolt, get laser bolt method. Let's define a new raycaster and some helper variables, like a direction, the position of the impact, and the color of the impact. And also, I want to grab the, the, uh, the box that was impacted. First thing I want to do is to calculate the direction. And I'll use that direction vector when I'm setting the raycaster. Um, so. Yeah. Now I'm going to check for intersected objects. And this is important right here. This array, hang on, this right here, this is, these are the objects I'm checking. I'm checking only the boxes and the hit tube area. That's it. This true says be recursive. I actually don't need that to be true. Anyway, if we detect an intersection, handle it. I'm going to copy uh, uh, that is, I'm going to set this impact pause vector to the point of that intersection. I'm also going to get the color. Uh, grab that. And lastly, I want to do a little bit of cleanup. Um, sorry. Now, if it's, a, if it's not the tube, if it's one of the boxes, then I want to grab that box. Um, this is that hook I created earlier. Um, the collision object is not the same thing as this impact box. Uh, um, it's not visible, right? It's, this is the visible one. I also want to just go ahead and remove that one that was impacted. So cleaning it out of the scene. Save that. No errors. Also no collisions yet. We've set all these variables. Now we need to kind of handle it. Let's start by creating a couple of variables we'll use inside of our update function. The scale opacity and ex is exploding var variables. And now let's update this update method. Okay, so here's our new update method. We're gonna check to, whoa, look at all that. We're gonna check to see if our laser bolt is currently active, and if so, is it exploding? No, then go ahead and move it. Um, just that's the same line we had before. Um, however, if it's within distance of a half a unit of our impact position, then we're gonna move to that impact position and we're gonna set the color of our laser bolt to that impact color and that's gonna make it look like a nice explosion and set this is exploding flag to true. So now if, um, sorry, 
also I'm going to set the scale to zero. So the visible box is now invisible because I shrunk it down. So if we are exploding and our opacity is greater than 0 0.01, go ahead and shrink down by this rate and shrink and fade out by this rate. Um, otherwise, if you are um, already invisible, just set yourself invisible and set your active flag to false. I'm just going to go ahead and update the scale and the opacity and this active flag. That's it. And if I save and start shooting, look at that. It's already impacting the walls and impacting and destroying the boxes. Woohoo! That was a heavy lift, I think, but the result is pretty freaking awesome. One last thing I wanted to do in this fire laser method was just to add a little bit of cleanup. And that's to filter out the inactive lasers, those lasers with that active flag set to false, and remove them from the scene. And then also redefine the lasers array so that it only includes active ones. Okay. Let's add the stars. And then we're done. Import get star field from whoops. Get star field dot js semicolon and we'll just add those stars to the scene right here under the composer right before we define anything else uh, const stars equals get star field and then scene dot add stars these are in th these are very visible it's possible that yours wouldn't be you need to be sure that the star field material uh, this points material here has this fog false. If you don't have that set, you're not going to see any stars at all. If you like this video, be sure to share it with uh, anyone else who liked it. It really helps my channel grow. Um, I want to give a big thanks to everyone who's supported me on Patreon. Um, and yeah, thanks to everyone else uh, for coming by, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.